So today I wanted to talk about MCPs. I know it's a buzzword right now. You might have seen videos already about it. Here's my take on it. Also towards the end, I'm gonna show you how you can configure VS Code with Copilot to use MCP servers. But first let's talk about what is MCP. Let's look at how AI has kind of transformed our work, right? So we have LLMs, you're a developer engineer, you know, everyone is kind of using them now in one way or another to boost their productivity. And currently the LLMs, you know, we know that they can generate stuff, but they can't take actions. What that means is it can generate an email for you. So if you say, hey, I've got this proposal that I'm trying to send out, can you make optimizations to this email to sound it more precise and articulate? It will do that. But if you say an LLM that, hey, can you send out this email? It won't know how to send that because it doesn't have access to Gmail or Outlook currently. It can generate stuff, but it can't take actions. And that's where the current state of LLMs come in. So you can already tell we are headed towards this agentic version of LLMs, also known as agents, right? Because we have seen that with GitHub Copilot, you know, your coding kind of assistant, because they're not only specific to a niche like coding, but they can also make edits on your behalf to a file. Similarly, we have search functionality. So if I go to ChatGPT, you can see now it can search the web for you. So it has access to some kind of API where it is able to search the web for you now and so on, because you know you have seen a lot of agents out there. Same thing is with things like V0 from Vercel or also Cursor. The current state of LLMs is that we are moving towards this agentic phase. But what's happening is there's no kind of standard or protocol to build these agents. Everyone kind of uses their own. So like even with things like Langchain and other open source frameworks, you know, there's a framework that can help you build these agents, but there's no specific standards or protocol that exist. And that's where MCP comes in. So we have MCP, which stands for Model Context Protocol. And this is what the kind of the structure looks like right now. Typically you'll have a client, you'll have an MCP server, the client talks to the MCP server and the MCP server gives back the list of tools it has available to perform certain actions because remember this is for the agentic nature giving LLMs the power to perform actions with proper context. So the tools can be anything, right? So you can see if you want to go back to the copilot example, the tools could be to write to a file or read from a file or the tools could also be a Postgres or a SQLite database. So you know, you can read from the database or update the database. This is kind of the overall structure of how MCP would work. Of course, there are standards we will talk about, but you have your client. So this could be, you know, VS Code. This could be Cursor. In future, I see, you know, this could be DaVinci Resolve. So you get the idea. The client can be any application which wants to use a MCP server to perform certain tasks which are asked from the user. Now the MCP server is what brings in the tools and the context. So let's look into that. So MCP, as we know, M stands for model. Models can be open AIs, it can be Anthropic's Cloud, it can be Google's Gemini. So these are the LLMs, right? And then C stands for context, which is the most important because that's how the LLM would know what to do and how to do, right? For example, what I have here is Let's say if there is an outage, right? So we can ask our LLM that check if there are any outages issues on the example repo. So this could be any repo or is there any discussion in Slack regarding an XYZ service outage? Now, if you ask that right away to Claude, so if you have Claude installed, you know, it won't be able to answer that. Similarly, if you have VS Code and you're asking GitHub Copilot that, hey, do you know if there are any outages on this repo or there are any issues reported on this repo? Or could you also check Slack if there are any discussions currently about an outage? You know, which is very typical when uh, within infrastructure teams is there's uh, like a Slack channel that is set up for an outage or discussions going on or 
there might be a higher priority issue open on GitHub. Now with current cloud or GitHub Copilot or cursor without an MCP server, we won't be able to answer this because you know our LLM doesn't have access to our, to our GitHub repository. It doesn't have that uh, functionality to go fetch the details of the GitHub repository. Neither does it have access to Slack. Like it's not scraping Slack every minute. And this is where the MCP servers come in. So if Slack has an MCP server that exposes this data in a certain standard that the LLM can consume, you know, it'll know the context of those conversations. Similarly, GitHub, if GitHub has an MCP server, you know, it can expose that data with again, the said standards, the LLM can consume that through a client and give us what are the issues that are open. And this is what you'll see. So we have an MCP server for GitHub, we have an MCP server for Slack that will be used to answer this question. Now, the third thing is protocol. So protocol, you know, is just rules. It's a set of rules or set of standards that are set. And MCP, if you don't know, was Anthropic's idea. So Anthropic is behind MCP. So they have this certain set of rules that defines MCP. This is similar to, you know, you can think of HTTP, which is another protocol, because there are standards or a set of rules to have a status code that is 200, which is an okay status code. We could have called, you know, the status code to be anything, but it is 200, and that's how we know how HTTP works. 401 is unauthorized. 503 is service unavailable. Similarly, we have a protocol here for MCP. Now moving further, just FYI, I won't go too deep into all the feature and all how you can set up your own server. This will act as more of an introductory video so that you understand MCP. But let me know in the comments if you want a dedicated video on creating your own MCP server and how you can make it talk to the client. Coming back, there are different type of context. So right now, the main three are tools. So tools, these can be, these are basically functions, they're resources. So this can be files, this can be your file that has the code, This or it is a CSV with user data, and then you have prompts. So prompts are interactive templates that can be used by the user. Now we can also go to the, model, the MCP documentation, and here you can see this within server features. So you have prompts, resources, and tools. So prompts are user controlled, right? So an example would be slash commands or menu options. Resources are application controlled. So this is the contextual data that is gonna be attached and be managed by the client. As I gave you an example, like a CSV file or your code file if you have it open in VS Code. File contents, Git history, and then tools. These are model controlled functions that are exposed to the LLM to take action. So going back to the example of, you know, sending an email. These are API post requests, file writing. If you want to update or create a new issue through Copilot, you know, this is where those tools will come in. So now we can also look at the general architecture that MCP documentation provides. It's pretty similar to the diagram that I had, um, but there's bit of more information here. So, you know, you have your MCP client. Again, as I said, this can be cloud IDE application or any IDE like VS Code or cursor. And then you have different MCP servers that talk over the MCP protocol to perform the action or task. And now I wanted to cover the two built-in transport types. We saw that in this diagram. So the one is standard input output. This enables con communication through standard input and output streams. So this is particularly useful for any of the local integrations that you can think of or command line tools. They also have examples for both Python client, server side, and then TypeScript client and server side. And the second transport type is the SEC or server sent events. Again, as I said, I won't go too deep into this. They again have examples for both Python and TypeScript. But let me know in the comments when we build our own MCP servers, you know, we will be covering this. So moving along, here are some example servers that we can use. There are other marketplace or like list of MCP servers, websites out there, but MCP itself has some examples. So we have an MCP server for these data and file systems, development tools, web browser and automation, as I was saying about Slack, there is an MCP server for Slack. So now 
without me talking more about MCP, let's see it in action. So if I click on the GitHub, I have it open here. This is the GitHub MCP server. And how you can use this is the example included here is through Cloud Desktop, but today I'll be using VS Code. So if you wanna follow along, you'll need Visual Studio Code Insiders. So I'll make sure this is linked down below. Um, you can install this, but how you connect to the GitHub MCP server is by using this JSON configuration. So for Cloud, you can add this to the Cloud Desktop config.json but I'll show you where you can do this for VS Code. And there are two ways you can do this. So one is through Docker and the other one is just using NPX. So I'll be using that. So let's go over to the Visual Studio Code Insiders. And as you can see, I have my settings.json open. If you don't, you can click on this gear icon or you can do control plus comma. And this will open the settings tab, but you can click on this file icon that will open it in the text editor. So here, as you can see, the MCP discovery is enabled. I can also open Copilot on the side. You can see there is a gear icon in the Copilot chat. If I click that, you can see you can add an MCP server or you can install an ex extension. There are no tools available as of yet. If you click on add MCP server, you can do this through this wizard or the other way is just copying that JSON that we had. So I'll do the M NPX example, copy that comma, and then you add that. But you can see there is an error, and this is because there's a certain way that you need to define it in Visual Studio Code. This works for Cloud Desktop, but for VS Code, what we need to add is an MCP block. There we go. And instead of MCP servers, we need just servers. There we go. Now we have an MCP server named GitHub. What you also need to do is add your personal access token here. So you need to create a personal access token in GitHub because that's how it'll access information from the GitHub MCP server. So I have created mine. I'm gonna add it to this file. So for obvious reasons, I didn't want to show you my personal access token, but I have it saved now. And you can see the number here went to 26 because now it can access the MCP server GitHub. So let's ask it something. Can you tell me what all issues are open for learn to cloud Linux dash CTFs? GitHub Copilot, if it uses GPT-40, just like if we use Slack, you know, Maybe the Slack conversation happened three seconds ago because there was an outage. Copilot won't know about that conversation or it would also not know about the GitHub issues. But through MCP servers, it is able to get that relevant information or context and provide it to us. So you can see, can you tell me what all issues are open? And it says, here are the open issues. There's issue number 35. And it also gave me the pull request that is open. What you can do is you can also ask, Hey, can you create a new issue on that repo saying test? So we'll click on continue. It asks me if you want to run this action. And it says, it seems I don't have the necessary permissions to create an issue on this repository. The reason for that is my personal access token, I only gave it limited permissions. So if my personal access token had write permissions to this repository, it would have been able to create this issue here. So I hope you get an idea of how MCP works. But as I said, if we go back to our original example of asking about the outage, so check if there are any outages, issues on the example repo or discussions in Slack regarding a specific service, we could go to the example servers and connect it to Slack as well. So if you click on Slack, you'll see the instructions on how you can add this. So again, Docker and NPX both are available. So you'll just need to add this to your Visual Studio Code settings.json and it will have the required context of Slack conversations through the Slack MCP server. So that was the video. I hope it was helpful. Again, let me know in the comments. Uh, in the next part, we can go ahead and build our own MCP server and kind of go over more details on the protocol itself and what all you need to build your own MCP server. Until then, peace.